So far we were discussing the attraction between polar molecules. What about non-polar molecules? In non-polar molecules, we will have some shift in the electron because electrons are always in random motion. So at one time, it will move towards one side of the atom and creates a temporary or instantaneous dipole. So that means in on one side, when the electron clouds moves on one side of the atom, there will be slightly negative charge and on the other side there will be slightly positive charge that induce another dipole in the neighboring atom and the positive part and the negative part will attract so because of the temporary dipoles generated so the tendency of an electron cloud to shift like this we call that one as polarizability this this type of attraction we call lenden dispersion forces and this is the dominant imf in non-polar molecules. So this is present in all molecules, whether it is non-polar or polar molecules. In polar molecules, the dominant is either dipole-dipole or hydrogen bond, whereas in non-polar molecule, the dominant IMF is LDF. Lenden dispersion forces or LDF is also known as dispersion forces, and this is weaker than the hydrogen bond as well as the dipole-dipole interaction but it can add up to a stronger attraction as well. There are three factors that affect the strength of LDF. First one is size, second one is number of atoms, and the third one is shape of the molecule. Let's go ahead and see each one. This table shows the boiling point of halogens increases down the group. The reason for that one is we can see that atomic radius increases down the group. When the atomic radius increases, the outer electron will be far from the nucleus, so the temporary dipole generated very easily. So that creates more attraction, stronger IMF. Therefore, the boiling point will be higher. That's the reason iodine is a solid at room temperature because stronger IMF, and bromine is a liquid at room temperature because it's smaller than iodine but bigger than chlorine which is a gas chlorine is a gas at room temperature which is smaller in size compared to bromine and fluorine is the smallest and it, this one is also exists as gas at room temperature because the outer electron is going to be very close to the nucleus so the electron distortion or the shape of that por, uh, poles will not form that easily as in iodine which is bigger so in iodine the pores can form very easily and more imf more ldf stronger ldf so stronger imf so higher the boiling point so we say that they are more polarizable when they have more electrons so in the case of iodine, we will say that iodine is more polariz polarizable than chlorine and then bromine and then fluorine. So this causes dispersion forces increase down the group. So iodine is more polarizable, therefore stronger IMF and higher boiling point. However, both iodine and bromine vaporize readily at room temperature that indicates that the LDF is very weak that dispersion force in both bromine and iodine is very weak. Second factor that affect LDF is the number of atoms. So for example here hydrocarbon the first one is decane that means it contain more carbon and hydrogen therefore greater number of polarizable electron and therefore it form more temporary dipoles and it will have higher boiling point than pentane which has less number of carbon and hydrogen so less number of polarizable electron and therefore it cannot form as many as temporary dipoles as in decane therefore the boiling point is less so here less polarizable atoms so therefore less ldf so weaker imf so we uh, lower the boiling point compared to decane which got larger number of polarizable electron and therefore stronger LDF and therefore higher the boiling point. 
The third factor that affect the strength of LDF is the shape of the molecule. Let's see these two molecules here. The first one is normal pendin, that means it's straight chain, whereas the second one is neopendin, that means it is branched. So in the first case, that is in the normal pendin, it has more surface area to interact with the neighboring molecule, and so the attraction between the molecule will be stronger than neopendin, which got less surface area to interact with the neighboring molecule. So the attraction between the molecule is stronger here. Therefore, it need more energy to break that attraction and it will have higher boiling point. And in this case, the attraction between the neighboring molecule will be less because of less surface area. Therefore, it requires only less energy to break that attraction. Therefore, it will have lower boiling point, even though both has the same number of carbon atom and hydrogen atoms, only because of the shape changes. So the surface area changes, so the interaction changes. The fourth type of intermolecular attraction is ion dipole interaction. That means when you dissolve an ionic compound, say for example, sodium chloride, it will form two ions, sodium ions and chloride ions. So what happens when you put that sodium chloride in water is water got dipoles, that means Oxygen will have a slight negative charge and hydrogen will have a slight positive charge as we dis discussed before. So the positive part of water molecule will orient towards the negative ion of sodium chloride. And the negative part of water molecule will orient towards the positive part of the ionic compound. That's how the ionic solid dissolves in water. So we call this type of interaction ion-dipole interaction. For example, let us see how to show the orientation of water molecule around the calcium ion here. When it dissolves in water, what happens is this cation will be surrounded by water molecule in such a way that the negative part of the water molecule, which is oxide ion, will point towards calcium ion from all sides. So I can show all sides with a positive away and negative closer to the calcium ion like this. So that is how the calcium compounds are dissolving in water. So this is how we can show the ion dipole interaction. So now let us see how can we explain the solubility of different vitamins. Say for example, vitamin C, is it soluble in water? And vitamin D, is it soluble in water? Let's go ahead and see that one. How can we decide that one is? We will see the IMF, that means interaction between the molecules. So we can see that in vitamin C, we have OH, 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 and all this means we have polar ends here, right? So a lot of polar ends here because the electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen and also we can see that hydrogen, this can interact with the neighboring molecule or attract with the neighboring molecule through hydrogen because this hydrogen can form an attraction between phone elements. So the neighboring oxygen and this OH can form hydrogen bond. So this polarity makes it soluble in water because water is also polar. So the idea is that polar compounds dissolves in polar solvents. So water is polar solvent. And we just explained that vitamin C is also polar. So polar dissolves in polar. In other words, like dissolves like means non-polar will dissolve in non-polar solvents. So what about vitamin D? In vitamin D, I can see only one polar part here. All these section, I can see hydrocarbon. So there is not much difference in electronegativity. So this part is going to be non-polar. So the IMF here is going to be LDF, that is dispersion forces. So that means this is non-polar part, 
this is a small light polar part here so it's not going to dissolve that much in water because water is polar so it will dissolve in fat or oil that's how we can explain the properties and in this particular case the solubility of some vitamins or some other that happen in our body this is the application of one of the application of IMF intermolecular force of attraction some other unique properties of liquids such as viscosity that is the resistance to flow surface tension that means tendency of a liquid to reduce its surface area just like water droplets and capillary reaction that means the ability of liquid to move up a narrow tube and adhesion that is the attraction between molecules of a liquid and the surface of a tube we can explain all these phenomena using the IMF we have learned so far.